Hi guys, welcome to this new session of Portfolio Management for CFA Level 2. Today we will be starting with the next reading which is measuring and managing the market risk. Now this reading has just one major topic which is the VAR, value at risk. Aside from that there are a lot of smaller topics given within this reading. All of those topics we will be just combining them together and discussing very briefly in this particular video session because all of those topics are discussed at some other parts of your CFA curriculum either at level 1 or at level 2 in much more detail. So over here you just have a very basic generic discussion on it. So instead of uh, spending too much time on discussing details of those things that you know are better explained in other topics, we'll spend our time discussing VR and then we'll just have a general discussion and discuss some terms and uh, miscellaneous topics that are there in the remaining chapter. So let's start with the first topic itself, which is value at risk. B -A -R. Now value at risk is one of the method of estimating how much risk you have. So there are a lot of other methods. Some of them we've already covered at level one. Some you will cover at level two for individual securities. VAR is just another method. Now, in order to understand VAR, let's take a statement. 5% VAR is $2 million. This is how normally VAR is stated whenever it is defined. Now, what exactly does this mean? Well, VAR by definition tells you the least amount of loss, the minimum loss that you will have in a certain percentage of cases. So, this statement means that you will have a loss of at least $2 million 5% of the time. 95% of the time, you will not have a loss of $2 million or more. You will have relatively profits or low loss situations, but 5% of the time, you will have a loss of at least 2 million. This 2 million is just at least, which means in this 5%, you can even have more than 2 million. This 2 million is the threshold. Now, in order to understand this better, let me draw a graph. So think of this as a normal distribution slightly skewed in my drawing but I was intending it to be normal distribution. So if this is the normal distribution of all the profits that a portfolio can have or let's say you have an investment, you are looking at what different returns you would get from an investment in terms of dollar value. VAR represents the lower 5% this area is 5% and this critical point, this critical point, this is my VAR because VAR is only telling me what is the minimum loss I will have 5% of the time. So if all of these are losses, this is the minimum loss. I can have a loss more than 2 million as well. Because VAR is always talking about value at risk, in graphical sense, it would always be one tail and it will be left tail itself because it's a risk, it's talking about losses. All losses won't be on the right tail. Right tail normally represents profits. So left tail, you pick up an area. Area would generally be specified. You could have 5%, you can have 2%, 1%, maybe 10%. And then you just look at that critical point, that critical point, is your VAR. So if I talk about all of this discussion in slightly more logical sense, which would help us in the calculations also. This point from level one and level two, this point represents the mean. Now, if I have to figure out this point, normally our method was mean minus because I only need left tail this time it's not plus minus only minus minus some z value 
z value would depend on the level of significance this is 5% in one tail if it is 5% in one tail z would come out as 1.65 so you will have to remember the one tail values that you had from level 1 itself so z value multiplied with standard deviation this is a notation that you have done countless number of times this is the same notation of confidence interval the only difference is in confidence interval we have both plus and minus here we only have minus it's a one tail test that is it this is how you figure out what the vr value is this is the calculation this is the concept so i hope till here it's clear what vr is what the idea behind this is now let's look at it in slightly more detail we have three different methods by which vr can be estimated one of which has detailed calculations as well given in your syllabus so let's look at those three methods and let's also take one example 